Arizona's Family Plus starts now. Well, good morning, Arizona may be wrapping up, but we still have more local news for you right now. Welcome to Arizona's Family Plus. I'm Gina Maravilla. Let's go ahead and get right to your top stories. Right now, a homicide investigation is underway as we speak in Phoenix after police say a confrontation between two people turned into a deadly shooting. It happened early this morning near 3rd Avenue and Roosevelt. Police say the shooter is in custody, but officers on the scene tell us that the shooter was also injured and may have acted in self-defense. And now we turn to a sad development in a horrible double shooting from last night in West Phoenix. Police telling us that the two victims, a child and her mother, have both died as a result of their injuries. Officers identified the man in custody as 34 year old Lewis Mooton. Investigators say he kicked in the front door of an apartment near 83rd Avenue in Thomas and then fired several shots. They say that he is the estranged husband of 32 year old Lene Mooton and father of 11 year old Ava Mooton. They're the two victims in this shooting. Well, the NTSB is now releasing new details about a plane crash in northern Arizona that left the pilot dead and his passenger injured. The single engine piper took off from northern California last month and then went down in a wooded area about 11 miles west of the Page Airport. The preliminary report makes no conclusions at this point, but notes that the nose and the main landing gear had collapsed, and that might suggest that the pilot may have been trying to set down. Well, some parts of the valley got much more than just rain this morning. In fact, you probably missed quite a light show while you were sleeping, but one Mesa neighborhood certainly did not. That's where lightning hit a house. In fact, neighbors telling us the lightning woke them up when it hit a home. In fact, they checked their security cameras and here's what they saw. So you saw the bright flash there with the loud boom. We're told that they ran to their neighbor's house to try to get them up. They were banging on the door. They even tried to put out the fire with a hose, but the flames kept growing. So the Benelli's continued to bang on the door to get their neighbors out of their home. Because of the style of roof on this house, fire crews had to use ladders to try and fight this fire, which was continuing to grow inside the attic. I think the biggest thing uh, for the public to know is that uh, when you've had a significant event like this near you, uh, you should probably get outside, take a look, make sure you're not seeing anything smoking or smoldering uh, prior to going back to bed. Smoke detectors are amazing, they do a great job, but they're on the inside of the home. The lightning strikes are typically on the outside of the home where there's not a fire detection system. So the home is significantly damaged. We're told both people inside the house at the time of the lightning strike and that fire got out OK. But as you can imagine, they'll be displaced from their home for some time. Well, did you know that this month, October, is known as Sober October? It's a trend and an opportunity to use the month to avoid drinking alcohol. So Monica Garcia is asking, does it work? And how exactly do you know if you have a problem? Well, there are a lot of good reasons not to drink. I mean, you're not hung over the next day, and especially if you like to go out to drink like here in Scottsdale, you're going to save some money by not drinking. But what if you're someone who likes to drink a lot to the point of binging? Quitting cold turkey for sober October can be risky. According to a behavioral health expert we spoke to, being an alcoholic means having a mental and a physical dependency on alcohol. If you try sober October, it's recommended that you pay attention to how how you feel without drinking beer, wine and liquor, especially for those who may have relied on alcohol during the pandemic. I think for everyone it's different. Um, usually it comes from an outside person or someone in our lives that, you know, you know, express their concern. Um, when, when, when someone's in the midst of alcoholism and drug addiction, you know, heavily in it, uh, it, it's very hard for us for them to see, you know, that it's a that it's a problem. She says the number one thing that holds people back is the fear of judgment. If you do give up alcohol this month and you're having trouble, consider talking to a doctor or maybe a mental or behavioral health professional. She also says it's thanks to the pandemic that there are more addiction counselors available online if you'd like to seek help anonymously. In downtown Scottsdale, Monica Garcia, back to you guys. 
Good information. Thank you so much, Monica. In our Finding Forever series, we tried to connect eligible kids to caring families here in the state of Arizona. And today, our Ian Schwartz meets Abigail. She is a kind teenager who is looking for a loving family, just like many kids in the foster care system. Let's put the brush in the water just a little bit. And what better place to express that creativity than at Burst of Butterflies in Chandler? I don't really know how to paint, but drawing was fun. But with the careful help of her guide, Abigail sat down to chat with me while she painted. She said she's a big fan of the outdoors and sports. I like to swim and I like to play volleyball. Abigail loves animals of all sorts and has even thought about being a veterinarian when she gets older. Because I like animals, but it's, it's always been a job I wanted. Ask Abigail to describe herself, and she barely skips a beat. Funny, smart, creative. Her adoption recruiter says she would thrive in a home with younger sisters or as an only child. Abigail says she also loves to help in the family. Oh yeah, I like to help with pets and um, younger siblings. And, and to cook. But most importantly, Abigail wants a family who loves her and lets her know it. In Chandler, Ian Schwartz for Arizona's family. I just felt I had to do something, and that was the only thing that I felt I could do. Well, this is a story that's going to make your day. Three sixth graders, sixth graders are getting a lot of kudos this morning for being very brave in what was a scary situation. The 11 year olds rushed to help their school bus driver when she started experiencing a medical emergencies. So the boys say that they were on their way to Cocoa Palm Middle School in Scottsdale when they heard someone yell she's having a heart attack. And that's when the bus driver suddenly pulled over. She appeared to be in distress, but instead of staying in the back of the bus in their seats, the boys ran up to the front to see what they could do to help. So I was like, um, do you want do you want me to call 911? Are you okay? She's she just shook her head no that she wasn't okay. And I asked her, should I call 911? She's like, yeah. The bus driver told me to call her mom on her phone, her personal cell phone, and tell her that if she didn't survive, that she loved her, which was kind of emotional for me. Wow, wow, what a weight for an 11 year old to carry. So paramedics showed up within minutes thanks to those boys calling 911. The paramedics rushed the bus driver to the hospital, and you know what? We're told that this morning, She's now home. She's recovering and she's doing better. Great job, boys. Coco Paws principal said he could not be more proud of his students. And frankly, we are all proud of you boys. What an incredible example you have set. Thank you so much for watching Arizona's family. For the very latest news, traffic and weather, you can head to our website, azfamily.com, or certainly you can download our news app. I'm Gina Maravilla. Make it a great day.